listening to The Edward Fowler Show. Now, here's your host, Edward Fowler. Hey everybody, welcome back to my show. I hope you all had a fantastic week. It's now the weekend, finally. Woo! Another one down in April of 2024. Before we dive into this flashback episode, because I did promise you I'm going to bring you one today. Uh, of course, three things went wrong for me this past week. We had my microphone. We lost connection with that during uh, my episode with uh, Jordan Castle. Uh, who knew that would be the last episode with that current wire. Uh, it took me until the end of the week to get a new one ordered. So we're now back in business for next week. Got two more interviews coming up for you next week. Can't wait for them. Uh, then we had an issue with my car um, with the clutch. But that seems now to be okay. We'll see how that goes. And the third thing is uh, I unplugged the USB cable which connects my microphone and my headphones and that disconnected and I broke that but now it's been fixed so uh, three things are wrong three things got fixed so happy days in that in that sense of ways and then this week's episode is Alexander Hammerstone flashback episode with him where we discussed all sorts of things of his time in MLW at the time to his haircut of why he thought it'd be better to get more exposure uh, to be the part of the then dynasty uh, which was a dominant group in MLW uh, and many other topics we discussed as well but here is the full interview with my guest Alexander Haverstone for your listening it's having uh, the the major player of MLW I think and uh, who is, uh, of course, now in uh, a part of uh, the Pro Wrestling Noah due to the uh, partnership recently between uh, Pro Wrestling Noah and, M- and MLW. Um, Alexander Hamilton is on the show, ladies and gentlemen. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. You're welcome. And, um, you know, um, you are part of the uh, toughest group in modern-day wrestling, where really, later dynasty, and you, you've got all the belts apart from one. Um you know, you're 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 the face, aren't you? Really? Uh, I mean, uh, I'd like to think so. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you, you know, you're almost the face. But I mean, to me, you guys seem a bit cowardly for not going after the world championship. Um, would you want to go after the world championship? Maybe. I mean, I'm not going to say we're not going after. I'm going to say that hasn't happened yet. You know, you're looking at your three guys holding three major championships. It's uh, you see, realistically, we're just trying to not make our gear bags that heavy. Okay, I get you. I get you. Uh, but uh, what what Hamilton is really trying to say is he, he's a bit scared of Batu, so uh, he's going to wait until <laughs> he loses and then go after the belt. Isn't that right? Uh, man, I mean, I think I've, I've wrestled Batu a handful of times already across the country, so. Mm. Uh, scared maybe isn't the right word. But, uh... <laughs> well, well, it's, it's not happening in MLW. So uh, if, it, if it's happened there, then 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 something needs to happen. Well, when the one if that if that's what uh, the the powers that be decide to put across the ring for me, I'm more than ready for it. Well, I'm I'm waiting for it, and I think the fans wait for it to happen as well. Yeah, you know, I think um, it's your time to be the world champion, be the face of the company. I think I I, I think you draw more money than uh, Fatu. Well, I mean, I, when I ever since signing with MLW, that's the position I wanted to be in, and I mean, really, with any company, that's the position I want to be in. But specifically here, and uh, I mean, I think I have a cool opportunity with the with the open weight championship. You know, to set the pace and set the standard for what that championship means. But yeah, I mean, typically, the world heavyweight championship is going to be the you know the end all be all. It's going to be the big brass ring to grab. So. You know, I, I, I right now I have a lot on my plate with everything sitting in front of me. But you know, don't think that uh, that world heavyweight title is something I'm looking at down the line. Of course, of course not. And uh, and uh, of course, I've been watching you before MLW. So uh, I, I I've been watching you. You may see my tweet. I think I think you liked it uh, when you seen that. Uh, but I've actually seen your work since 2014. Many years ago, I can't believe it's been that long. In Many a... years ago, even those those are the matches that aren't worth watching. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, well, you know, it's, it's the early days of what was Hamilton to be now, kind of thing, you know. And uh, 
a funny story to, to 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 how I came across that company. Um, because I have family on the west coast, and some of them live in Oregon. So I just typed in, you know, pro wrestling in Oregon. In case I I, I ever go to Oregon, and I think why not just check out some wrestling around there, of course. And of course that punk, that company popped up, and then I seen this guy with, you know, blonde hair, uh, big muscles, with a good tan, and doing uh, some athletic things in that company and uh, fast forward so many years later he's got short hair still got a tan and big muscles <laughs> so uh, but yeah that's how I came across you yeah I mean, that was, that's funny because uh, as you know as minute of a thing as that might seem to be that's actually the first place uh, the first company I ever worked television for and you know working in television wrestling is kind of like a different style than just working you know whatever indie show so you know even though that was just a small little place that you know I'd that place actually helped me develop a lot of a lot of the stuff you get to see today. So, you know, it's it's funny how uh, looking back on that, like I've, it's funny how because I look back on it, and, you know, it's uh, it seems like forever ago, but like that's really like kind of what started molding the hammerstone you see today. Mm, exactly, and uh, so you know, th- th- this is a funny question for you maybe, but um, what made you to cut your hair off? I mean, you know, it, w- it was fantastic hair you had back then, you know, why cut it off? I mean, I think uh, in wrestling, you, um, you know, you constantly have to kind of reinvent yourself and change yourself and keep things fresh in order for people to kind of like get bored with what you're doing. Um, and maybe not so much on indie wrestling because you're not exposed to people on a weekly basis, you know, show after show after show, week after week, month after month, year after year. Um, but so, you know, on the indies, you know, I was basically like at this level where, you know, every show I did, you know, all the indies I did, I was like one of the top guys and main events and championships. And that was going to keep happening. But I didn't want to keep doing what I was doing. I wanted to break through to the next level. You know, and a lot of people at a lot of the companies at the next levels had seen what I was bringing to the table already. You know, maybe they saw it years prior and, you know, when I was a little bit less polished and thought, you know, they weren't interested. So basically I got the idea that it could just kind of really overhaul things and overdo, you know, reimagine how I present myself, um, not just from a look standpoint, but from an attitude, from an in-ring, from all these things. So that way, when people are able to look at that and see that change, they might go, okay, let's give this another look. Let's see what this guy's doing. It seems like he's doing something way different. And, um, and hey, it works. Pretty much, you know, a haircut happened, and then, you know, a couple months later, I was signing the contract for MLW. So, and it's been a whirlwind of, you know, craziness since then. I've been booked very consistently all over the you know, country and now I'm going overseas with Noah so I'd say uh, you know as much as I might miss the long hair look sometimes and as much as a lot of people might prefer that like I have no regrets on what I did yeah yeah absolutely and uh, as you say that, that 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 could be reason why you're in MLW because of your haircut maybe you can just you know, put it down to that. If you didn't do your haircut, you might not be in in MLW today. Maybe you you, ne- you never know. <laughs> as, as, as silly as that sounds, you know, it, it it's just it's one of those things. You know, it's uh, because you know it's not obviously I'm not a different wrestler, but it just it might have been the thing that got some to turn someone's head and look. You know, and I always I tell guys all the time, it doesn't matter if you're a great wrestler if nobody knows it. You gotta get people to pay attention to you. You gotta get people a reason to watch. And then if they see how great you are, cool. But if, if if you're just the best wrestler in your town and nobody knows it, doesn't matter. You're not going to get anywhere. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, now, a few, um, I'm going to say about uh, maybe a month ago, I think it was, maybe maybe even two months ago, uh, I had on uh, MJF's, uh, you know, girlfriend, you know, Maxwell Jr. Friedman. I think that's the only thing we're going to disagree on. Uh, I do know his real, I, I do know you know his name really but uh, that's what i'm going to come on this show because he's the biggest jerk in pro wrestling um but i mean y- you must get fed up with him after five minutes in the room with him you must do uh he just talks and talks and talks absolute rubbish absolute oh man rubbish. I, I i you i i think you must be watching a different show than i am because man i think uh when the dynasty guys are together that's uh that's the funnest time there is no, 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 no. It's all about it's all about listen, what 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 he can get from you guys. It's not about what he can give listen, to the dad. Listen, we 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 all bring a different something to the table. We all bring a different 
personality to the picture, and when it all comes together, it makes magic. That's all that matters. Maybe, maybe so. But uh, so there you go, uh, Mr. Maxwell Junior Friedman. How you, you like that? Uh, there, I'll be posting that uh, later today. Uh, so uh, we see if we get a response from him. But let's talk about as well. Um, you know, you guys within the uh, the tag team championships um, in Chicago. You know, it was great. It was great, wasn't it? You know, and it was a great match um, against uh, the British Heart Foundation. Now, I, at the start of that match, I was cheering for them to win, of course. But after Brian Pillman Jr. knocking down Area Blake for no reason, or without even looking, I thought, you know what? I want the Dynasty to win. Let's get them to win. That <coughs> idiot Brian Pillman Jr., you know, got taught a lesson and uh, he's still bragging <laughs> on social media that he, he deserves no apology for that well sorry matey you do <laughs> well I mean, there you go that idiot Brandon, Tom, Brandon Tolman Jr listen I've been trying to tell people he's an idiot for a long time but I'm glad that somebody actually recognizes that oh believe me I do and, I, and I've been telling him on Twitter for the past few weeks and uh, you know and he says uh, uh, apparently apologies um, does not work and uh Apparently, uh, it doesn't do any help to his health. <laughs> so, uh, it's not very good, is it, really? But, I mean, you know, you need to be taught a lesson. You can't just go around hitting women off, off ladders for no reason at all. It's like, it's unprovoked. And, you know, all she tried to do was help the dynasty out. That's all. And she got, you know... Well, well listen, it was, it was a matter of time before we won the tag belt anyway. Whether whether Ari got involved, whether, Matt, whether Brian hit her, that doesn't even matter. At the end of the day, we won the belts like we were always going to. And now everything's the way it's supposed to be. And Ari is just fine. Yeah, well, I'm glad she made a full recovery because I was quite worried after, after seeing the, 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 the fall she took. Because I, I only had on the show two weeks before that happened. I'm thinking, oh, great, she's dead. But I'm glad she made a... Yeah, uh, especially a especially like she was wearing high heels when she did. Yes, <laughs> exactly. I, I was like, my God. Um, but the actual quote uh, I'll give here is uh, is from Brian Pumman Jr. He, he quoted me saying, I gave up a pie a while ago has done wonders to uh, to my health. Uh, whatever that meant to me, but, you know, you still need to apologise. Uh, you know, you can't just go around hitting women for no reason off the ladders, and it, it would give the wrong impression to other other people who may see you do that. Yeah. But, hey, yeah. well, I, I agree with you. <laughs> oh, thank you. And again, the only thing we wouldn't agree on is, is, is the MJF business. Uh, he's on my blacklist of not coming on this show because of, 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 of his attitude towards my good friend Chris Van Bleet not Chris Van Vleur as he calls him but Chris Van Bleet you know he's been on this show as well uh, Chris Van Bleet so he's on my blacklist unless he thinks his attitude of course but you're more welcome to come back on the show <laughs> uh, and let's talk about your other friend you know Richard Hodder you know nice guy very rich guy um, you know you need to keep him in touch you know because he maybe help you to hook you up with some good hotels some good cars and maybe good watches as well maybe oh, that, I mean, that is definitely true Holiday uh, Holiday is very generous with uh, with his wealth and uh, man Richard Holiday he's one of the he's one of like the guys that people need to be paying more attention to and talking about more because he's he's he kind of started out in the dynasty as kind of like the third wheel where like you know the spotlight was you know, on me and Max, but like Holiday just really, through his own natural charisma and his ability to cut these in- incredible promos, he just kind of really rose up and really set himself on the same standard. So now we got like three guys in this group who are all major players, and I'm really excited to see how that guy explodes in the next year or two. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm looking forward to the people looking forward to it, and I must plug this because I may get told off by M, by MLW. But of course, you can catch new episodes of MLW Fusion every single Monday night, 10 p.m. here in the UK on Free Sports, 10 p.m. Be that or be oh. squared to see the best faction in, in pro wrestling today, uh, the Dynasty. Um, but I mean, you know, um, what have you have you learned any uh, new uh, Japanese yet? Because you're heading to probably know and 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 I bet you need to speak a lot of uh, Japanese and, <laughs> and, 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 and English. Have you learned any uh, le- words yet to say like hello or I need a toilet? Or, Man, or, I don't uh, know anything at all. I'm leaving tomorrow and I <laughs> I'm very ill prepared. Oh no! I'm worried. <laughs> I'm nervous. I don't know how often I'm going to be able to find a gym, oh. how often I'm going to eat. I don't know how hard it is to get protein shakes while you're out there. So, I'm, you know, yeah. I'm hoping for the best. 
Well, I, I, well, I'm hoping you can still train and still be as big as, you know, we might see a different uh, Hammerstone in a month's time, you know? Uh, I know. I'm going to come home. I'm not going to have my, my Hogan tan anymore. <laughs> I'm going to be small. I'm going to be shriveled up. I'm going to look like a normal human being. Oh, it's gonna, it might be awful. So I'm, I'm hoping uh, I can eat enough rice and uh, what do they got over there? Kung Pao chicken? Yeah, yeah. Or, um, <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure you will survive. I'm hoping so. But uh, there is another guy over there um, who's uh, from the UK, actually. Never had him on the show yet. Didn't reach out to him, but uh, he never he responded to me. So if you listen to this, Chris, uh, you know, get on the A show. Alex, I'm Hammerstone has, so if you don't believe me, just ask him. Uh, he, he works for uh, Pro Wrestling Noah as well. And uh, yeah. you, know, you never know. You may wrestle him there and maybe even back in America, back in MIW. Yeah. But um, I mean, uh, oh, you, you never know. A lot of the match, like they've announced some of the matches over there, but there's, you know, I believe I'm doing 12 or 14 shows in like wow. uh, just over a month time. So there's going to be tons of matchups. There's going to be tons of stuff. So it's it's going to be wild. It's going to be wild for you, yeah, exactly. Uh, and uh, I, I wish you luck in all the matches. I I hope you just you know beat and destroy all the competition there to show you're the best American athlete in the world. And uh, you know, but I mean. Will we ever see yourself or even MLW over here in the UK? You know, because we are we we we've got the best fan base, much better than any other place, better than Arizona, better than Las Vegas, <laughs> better than Oregon yeah. or even New York. But I mean, you need to get over here to the best country. I mean, so I mean, you gotta think that you know, MLW is constantly making these moves. You know, we we just announced the, the partnership with Noah. Yeah. We just actually just this week we announced the partnership with the Crash. Uh, which is in Mexico. So, I mean, you really got to think a, a UK, you know, whether it's a partnership or just some shows over there, that's got to be coming soon. And, you know, just from knowing, you know, Court Bauer, he's, that's something that I know he wants to get done. But the thing about MLW is, you know, they've, so far they haven't ever tried to jump the gun and do something they're not ready or fully prepared for. So when it happens, it's like, I'm, I'm going to say when it happens because I, I wholeheartedly believe that's something that I see it happening within the next year, you know, with all the stuff that's going on and the, the rate we're growing at and the new markets that we're trying to get into, you know, just with the fact how well our television is doing over in the UK right now, yes. I fully expect that, you know, that's got to be something that's uh, in the in the works to, to manifest within the next year or so. Well, it has to happen. You know, it has to happen. It has to come to the greatest city in the world, Manchester, UK. <laughs> okay, it has to come here. Because if, if, if MLW, right, if that came to the UK, came to Manchester, UK, in the centre of Manchester, or, or even somewhere right near me, fantastic. Because I make sure I'll be there in person to invade the show. I will show that MJF dude the real, uh, the real person, the real bad ass him in the world it's not mjf okay it's the best podcast in the uk so uh he's, he's gonna be put on notice if he came to the uk <laughs> well uh now i'm looking forward to see this the, the match between you two i hope i hope we could book that <laughs> yeah yeah it'd be fantastic yeah you know he, he, he wants to steal scarves from other people feel free i've got plenty of of things up my sleeve that i can bring to uh to the mancunian fans um, but I mean, it'd be great to see you in person, you know. You get to see you get some uh, UK exposure from like uh, and and feel the wowness of the UK fans. Yeah, I mean, the, uh, I've been all over. I've been you know Canada, Mexico, all of the US, Japan, but I still have yet to come to the UK. So that's definitely uh, something I want to do. And whether that happens with MLW or just on my own, you know, um, it's definitely something. I'm looking forward to when it happens. So it'd just be that much cooler and that much sweeter if we got to do it with MLW and with the rest of the crew. Yeah, 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 exactly. And uh, then I would definitely embed the show and uh, make sure to tell the whole entire universe of MLW that uh, this is the A show and that um, I would just take over the whole show. They might have to kick me out of the show for it to continue. That's, <laughs> that's almost a loud voice I have. Um, as I can make my presence felt but I mean um, you know you, we've got all these great talent now coming into uh, MLW every every month now it looks like and um, you know who have you been excited to see in uh, to sign in MLW so far 
I mean, so just in the last couple of weeks, they announced Douglas James uh, signed to MLW. Douglas James is a guy based out of California here in the U.S., and he's just one of these guys who's just been phenomenal and putting on you know five star matches like over and over. And I've known Doug for a couple of years, so that's going to be something cool. I really, really am looking forward to seeing him and what he does. He's going to debut at the Dallas show um in just a couple weeks but you know the thing is like a lot of these guys like on the indies versus on a you know television product is so much different because a lot of times indie wrestling is just like it's just wrestling it's you know you don't necessarily see much of the character stuff much of the promo stuff so it's it's always a trip to see like these guys who are like you know um maybe have not had that like television uh engine behind them and you get to see like how they develop, you know, all those other facets of a pro wrestler. So that's what's always really cool. And MLW is like really great at showcasing like the personalities. And you know, if if a certain character doesn't have a match on a show, you know, they get a you know a promo or a segment or a recap or something to like really highlight it. So just within a couple episodes of watching, like you really familiarize yourself with all these different characters and personalities and see how they fit within this uh, greater world. Yeah, yeah, and it's and it, and, and it's great to see different um, cultures and different athletes from you know from different areas of, of the world, not just from America and Canada, but from also Mexico as well. You know, it's you know to see Luis Libre, you know, and Strong Style all in the same company. It's great. Yeah, they're they're really set. On, you know, obviously our show is called MLW Fusion, and it's because they really want to give that wide variety of appeal. Like, you know, we're not obviously you're not going to please everybody in pro wrestling, and of that's course. never going to be the goal. But um, the vision with MLW, I think, is just to bring the best styles from around the world, and you get to see them all in one place. Yeah, yeah. you know, a lot of a lot of shows get caught up, caught up with doing one specific thing and then that's all they do but like on a given episode of MLW you, you know you could have Davy Boy Smith and Timothy Thatcher you know doing a map based match for 20 minutes or you could end up seeing Jimmy Havoc in a death match or you know it's it's just it's crazy the variety you get you know yeah yeah and uh, thank you for mentioning Jimmy Havoc uh, thank you for that I'm probably going to get uh, fined now by that uh, big company we're not going to name him on this show uh, but if I do get fined, I will send that bill to you, okay? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll, I'll pass it on to MJF. I'll have him for it. All right. Well, thank you very much for that. Um, <laughs> now, of course, uh, we, 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 we did get a, 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 a treat. In a bit. I think you saw it, but uh, JFG, uh, if I'm going to call this person, because that person's name is very long and it's very hard to pronounce, Um but they want to know, how did you get your first start in wrestling? And again, I think we answered that early on in the show. Um, my, my my first start in wrestling, uh, well, I started in wrestling predating the WC. That was not, that, that was already a couple of years in when I started with them. But, uh, you know, I, I don't have anything super unique or super crazy. It's pretty much like most people. I just, you know, I kind of always wanted to do it. And uh, I started hitting the gym and then once I felt like I didn't look like a you know a scrawny little piece of crap in the mirror, I started looking for wrestling schools. And I was really lucky to find one pretty close to where I was at. And you know, wrestling is a really weird thing where like you kind of have no idea how to get into it, but once you get into it, like you just you kind of get like sucked into this underground world where everyone knows everyone and there's just connections everywhere. So like the deeper down the rabbit hole you go, it just like it's everything gets caught up in a whirlwind and before you know it you're you know moving to you're training at a new school and then you're getting on the road and you're traveling to different companies and then you're getting flown all over the world and yeah man it's so it was almost 10 years now but wow. yeah so i've uh been at this for a minute <laughs> well you know you still look quite young for your for for, for your age though you know kind of thing for doing it for 10 years you know you you look like you've been doing it you know uh, for that long, but I mean your age, you, you're not really showing your age, really. So what, whatever you're um, yeah, using I'm... to keep young, uh, keep doing it. <laughs> uh, well, I'm only 28, so I still got a couple good years left to me before I have to hang them up. <laughs> yeah, about 20 or 30 years to go. You never know. <laughs> never know. Uh, I, I, I'm going to go ahead and say I hope that uh, I don't have to keep doing it that long. <laughs> oh, there's, why not? There's days when I wake up. There's days when I wake up and I can't even tie my shoes. So. Oh. <laughs> 
Yeah, I thought we'd done it. Maybe, maybe, it's maybe, a, maybe should it's hang an up. Unforgiving in a few years. business. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Make make special appearances only. Uh, but yeah. yeah, make make the money and get out. <laughs> yeah, exactly that. Um, exactly, and um, you know. Tell my audience, and what is it, Arizona? It's a, it's, it's a very boring uh, city. You know, you got mountains and such, but I mean, there's not much to do there. It's just very hot, and people just come in and just go right back out because of the heat. But but tell us why. Why why should they stop in, in Arizona then? I mean, uh, I, I like Arizona. I don't mind it. Um, obviously, the heat, you know, is wild, but I can't even imagine. I've uh, Obviously, I traveled a lot. I've been a lot of places in the winter where it's just insane snow it's below zero and i i would deal with a miserably hot summer to avoid uh blizzards and all that nonsense in the winter so you know arizona i don't uh i, I don't know if i'll be staying here forever you know i have there's nothing necessarily keeping me here but um yeah i don't mind it it's, it's not as bad as you know people make it out to be yeah, okay, okay, fair enough. And uh, so, so where's the place you would like to move to then? Uh, you know, you're saying, is it, is it to Las Vegas maybe? Go to Sin City or is it go to uh, the no, East Coast? No, I mean, that, 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 that's the thing. You know, Las, so Las Vegas is, you know, only a couple hour drive for me. I, I wrestle in Las Vegas usually like at least twice a month. And that's only about four hours of driving. So, it's you know, to move there would be almost, you know, silly. Um <laughs> A couple, you know, in the last couple of years, you know, a couple of years ago, I was really considering moving to the to the East Coast just because I felt like I was in this point in my career where, like, I wanted something to happen. I wanted something to happen. It wasn't happening. It wasn't happening. So I thought the solution is, oh, move out East and get yourself in a whole new market, you know. But something I've kind of learned with um, wrestling, and this is something that, like, some wiser people have had to, like, really pound into my head is, like, sometimes guys are on the right path and they just need to stay the course but like everybody wants stuff to happen right away and like if big things aren't happening like on a weekly or daily basis people freak out and think they need to like change their course and they need to do something drastic on you know twitter or they need to move or they need to they like they just have to try some crazy thing to get noticed but it's like you're like you're on the right path, you know, and like that's something like one of my mentors has said to me. He's like, you're, he's like, you're on the right path. Just stay the course and like watch the things happen. Like, and then when big things happen, like people forget about them so quickly. You know, they get an opportunity here, or they fly to a new company, or they win a championship, or you know, they get whatever it is. You know, it happens, and they get real happy about it, and then they like nothing else happens for the next month and they're freaking out thinking they have to change something so it's like i remember i was there thinking about moving to the east coast you know but now that i've had that opportunity to you know i'm in a position where companies on the east coast are flying me out there to wrestle i see that like the landscape out there is basically the same as it is on the west coast you know you have your good companies you have your bad companies you have your good workers you have your bad workers yeah and um you know, fortunately, I'm in the position where I've created enough of a name of myself where I'm able to keep a full schedule and a lot of, you know, companies are willing to invest in the air travel. So I'm able to go and go to those places. But, like, I don't think, you know, unless you're in the you know, middle of nowhere, you know, moving to a whole new place just to be in a hotter wrestling market might not be the answer. You know, a lot of people think, like, that's what they got to do. Obviously, if you're new, you have to be near a good school and uh, you have to be able to wrestle. But, like, just, you know, if, if you're not ready to succeed in a certain at a certain level, then going to a different place isn't going to help you. Like, because all you'll do is you'll just, you know, get lo lost in the shuffle somewhere else. But, like, if you're truly, truly at that level, like, you're probably going to rise, you know, to the top no matter where you're at. Yeah, yeah, yes, absolutely. And, uh, you know, on that subject, we're going to talk about... Uh, we had on um, Selena Danawenta here on the Air Files show, okay? And um, <clears throat> one of her favorite factions outside of her own is, uh, is of course, the Contra unit. Um, I want to know... Who's your favorite um, people you like to uh, watch outside of the dynasty? Have you got a particular people you like to watch, or the, or or, the, or just the dynasty all day long? Man, I, I mean, maybe uh, I'd have to say dynasty all day long. You know, so the thing is, like, that's the thing about like MLW. It's like I I I enjoy watching our show. Like, if I'm gonna watch a show, like you know, an episode comes up and I'm on it, I'll watch the whole thing. I like to be. 
aware of whatever what everyone's doing. Mm-hmm. Like I remember back in you know, a, just just even like a couple years ago, you know, maybe even up to two years ago, I felt like I had to c- keep up with everything wrestling. I you know I felt I had to watch Monday Night Raw, I had to watch SmackDown, I had to watch Impact, I had to watch you know New Japan, I had to watch. I just felt like I had to be aware of everything. I had to watch everyone's matches. I had to watch what everyone was talking about, and like. You know, now I'm at a point where it's like I don't always want to watch wrestling. I don't always like to watch wrestling. You know, yeah. if there's something good I want to look at, cool, I'll check it out. But like, I'm a lot of times I'm wrestling three or four nights a week, and then for the rest of the week, I just want to relax. I just want to hang out with my dogs or hang out, you know, at home and you know do whatever I do. So, as far as like who I like to watch besides myself, you know. Really, right now, there's like nothing I'm like super paying attention to, if you know, to be completely honest. But that's just because I kind of like oversaturated myself for so long that now I'm just you know I'm going with the flow. And if somebody catches my eye, I'll pay attention to them, you know. But like, I I don't really have an answer for you. I'm 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 at a point too where like I feel like I you know especially with the dynasty, we've hit our creative groove where like. I don't feel like I have to kind of like look at what other people are doing and try to figure out what works. I just like to think, I just like to go in without any influence and see what we come up with and see how that works. And it's been a pretty fun process so far. It has been. And um, I, 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 I am um, actually, uh, we got the ratings um, about the ratings about uh, Selena Dana. And so she said that apparently uh, when she's uh, in charge of the show, uh, the ratings are through the roof than when she's not running the show. Do you agree with that, or do you think that when the dynasty is a part of the show, it's much more uh, eager and more ratings would go through the roof? Well, who knows? I mean, listen, Selena, you can say whatever you want, but I'm I'm guessing that the, half the ratings for Selena are guys who put the TV on mute and just like to watch her her face on TV or her in her skimpy dresses. <laughs> so that doesn't that doesn't really say much about the wrestling show. But hey, if you whenever the dynasty's on, I like to think that that's the most entertaining part of the show. And I'm still waiting for us to get to produce an episode. You never. She likes to talk about how she's the best, but yes. she doesn't have any competition. They're not letting anyone else do it. So hey, put, do- let us let us run. Let us have the ball. Let us run with it, and we'll see what happens. Yeah. I think it'd be pretty cool having uh, the Dynasty on it. Uh, maybe not have MJF have been through it, but I think you and uh, Richard Holly would do a, a fantastic job running the uh, running the show. I think that'd be a great idea. <laughs> having fresh ideas and everything like that. But I mean, um, so so, so who 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 who, who want, want, want to fight next in MLW? Who you've not had a chance to face so far, or maybe want to face again in MLW? Because there is um, some new stars there, and of course, some other people have gone a bit more dangerous since you've. Uh, Maybe last thought then. Yeah, I mean, um, so like we kind of touched on earlier, you know, I'm always going to be gunning for the top dog, and if that's Fatu, you know, like I said, we've we've got the opportunity to wrestle, you know, multiple times in multiple different states, but never on the stage like MLW, never in that in front of that many people, never on TV. So it's like that would be incredible to get to do it on that stage, you know, not only because. It'd be cool, but also because I'd be beating him and winning the heavyweight championship. But I digress. You know, um, besides that, you know, there's there's oh there's so many matchups that have never happened for me in MLW. You know, low key Tom Waller. There's all these really good guys. Um, but you know, to be honest, right now, like a, a big focus of mine is a rematch with Davey Boy Smith Jr. because we wrestled and it was arguably you know my best match in the company so far is a match that a lot of people liked um but it didn't necessarily end the way that satisfied me that satisfied davy or that satisfied the fans um it came to a to a disqualification mm-hmm. which is nice because i gotta keep my chip my championship but yes. um i'd like you know i want to get in the ring with him again uh, i think we have some unfinished business um and also you know on a on a real level he's one of the best wrestlers in the world right now so I, I as much as fun as it is to get in the ring and you know beat up Ariel Dominguez in five minutes or beat <laughs> up Cota Brazil in three minutes like I, I like to go out there with the very best in the world with the toughest with the biggest the strongest the best wrestlers and see what I got and test myself yeah well I think you should not get the low kick because I think you made us knock around like one minute or less because of his 
dangerous kicks and punches he's got nowadays. But I like how you mentioned you want a rematch. That's very unlikely of, of, of a wrestler who kept the championship by a discovery occasion, but once they rematch to prove that they can beat him, that's very unlike any person I've had on the show so far. So you're making history here, ladies and gentlemen. This is it. This is the real Alex Hammerstone. He's a real man. He wants to fight and he wants to get a proper win. Not just a cheap win by DQ. He wants to go out there and get a pinfall or a submission win. I like that. I like it even more now. But I mean, you're going after David Boy Smith Jr. You know, I, I, I have to go against you now because, you know, his father you know, um, lived, uh, he wasn't born, but he, he lived in Manchester, UK, of course, the best city in the world, and um, this is a true story, I said, I, I've mentioned this many times before, but, you know, his father, okay, his father, David Boy Smith, knew my father's father, okay, and, and, and they used to train in some gym, and became friends that way, and, um, you know, I had to go with David Boy Smith Jr., unfortunately, on that one, but, uh, sorry about that, but, I had to go with okay, the, uh, well, this is hey. Okay, well, hey, this has been a great podcast. This is a great interview, but I think we're gonna have to cut it off now. <laughs> oh no, he's gonna think, cut me off. I think no, no further questions. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, he'd be the second person to come off the show uh, by doing that. Um, but you know, that's the thing. I, I'm going to disagree on is that as well. But apart from that, no, nothing else to uh, disagree with on. Um, but I mean, you know. Tom Lawler will be be you know, a great match with you as well. But I I I think you can get through him easily. Um, he's a he's, he's a broken man. Mm, yeah, that's uh, that's something that we we, we really um, we really haven't seen how he's going to rebound and how he's going to come back from losing that championship. And you know, so who knows? I mean, Tom Lawler. He's, I mean, he's got a legitimate UFC background, and he's got that. Um, you can't take that away from him. So. He, it brings a different style to the ring, you know, and he, he did hold that heavyweight championship for several, several months in our company. I think, I believe he held it for about six months. So, you know, it's no easy task. So you can't, you can't say he's a slouch, but like you said, you know, getting, getting that taken away from him, you never know how somebody responds to that. It could, uh, once you get your ego shattered, sometimes, you know, you're never the same. Yeah. But yeah, I, yeah, I can agree with that. But I mean, he, he did have the time for like seven months or so, but I mean, most of the time he just talked a lot of rubbish, okay? And was like every two months or something. And, you know, he, he, wasn't, he wasn't really a fighting champion, you know? You guys talk and you wrestle on the same bent. He talks a lot, does not wrestle on the same show. He wrestles like a month after, you know, something like that. So, so really, he, he, he had the belt for like four months, really, fighting and defending it. So, uh, that's what, that, that's well, what I, I, I can't. I can't argue with that. I can't argue with that. Well, well there you go. You, this is why you come on this show because you get the the, the correct answers and you get uh, a lot of agreeing from both sides. You know, we're kissing each other's ass, aren't we, on this show today? <laughs> 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 uh, I'm glad. I, I'm glad I'm ready to trickle there. I think. I, I think I'm doing a, a very good job uh, keeping you on my side uh, there. So, uh, MJF, <laughs> if you listen to this. Yeah, you know you know who's a better podcast, don't you? Not Chris Van Bleet or Chris Van Blur, me. Um, <laughs> now, Aria Blake uh, tweeted this to me uh, last week. She said um, she was saying something about uh, everyone thinks they have a podcast. Uh, no, I gained nothing from you recording a chit chat with me for your dozens of followers. You just want a free conversation. If you have an actual podcast, regard. If you're a weirdo in their room and wants to Skype me, if you're attacked. Now, of course, we had on we 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 had her on the show again a few months ago, uh, two months ago, and um, so she said to me she liked my podcast. Uh, it was fun time. You're professional and know what I'm doing a, a, as an interview. Do you feel the same now since you've been on this show? Do you do you agree with that comment by Aria Blake on Twitter? Yeah, I mean, yeah, this is. This is just fine. So so far, you haven't tried to do anything weird yet. No. I mean, you did say you'd root for Davy Boy, so you lost you lost some points when you said you'd root for Davy. But <laughs> that's your um, fault. You, you you mentioned him. I didn't, I didn't mention him first. You mentioned him first. So I couldn't say nothing else. Well, you you could have you could have just done the proper thing and lied. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, my 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 listeners know I don't lie here on the Airfile Show. I I tell them the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Um, and sometimes too first, isn't it? So you know, maybe just a little bit of a sting. That's all. Yeah, well, I apologise for that. But um, <laughs> but I mean, so so so, where do you get your time from? Like, do 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 you go in the sun, or do you just um, get some time from you know your 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 favourite idol or? Uh... 
We do. We, we do. I, I got a lot of fake bacon, but then again, I'm in Arizona, so we do have a good sun. Yeah, yeah. I bet. I, I bet going out in the sun, you just go in the sun, but don't you just do it that way? Easier, saves time. I do, and that you know, I don't. I do. I do do a lot of sunbed because I'm impatient, and that's I'm worried about in when I'm in Japan. I don't even know if they have tanning beds <laughs> over there, and if they do, they're probably way too small. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There might be, but just, I mean, just a. Just the beds over there are too small. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I, I seen them in uh, like in movies and in the uh, called a Hitman game. You know, Hitman the game. Uh, they are quite small. Mm-hmm. I've seen on them games. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but I mean, you know, I've heard some things about these some beds. They can do serious damage to your health. So uh, if I was you, be careful. Oh, maybe 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 this listen, might help you. Listen, I'm a pro wrestler. <laughs> I'm obviously not first and foremost concerned with my health, or I would have picked a different career. <laughs> True, you would, but I mean, I'm just trying to help you with your health because we we want you in the ring for as long as possible. But if, if you could go into these sunbeds, it might ruin your chances of that. So maybe by going to Japan, this might help you. Maybe that's why Core has sent you to Japan. Yeah, well, he wants he wants me to. He sent me to Japan to stop my tanning yeah. That's what it is. Yeah, that's what it is. There you go. There you go. That's the true reason. There we go. So uh, we've uh, we tricked you now, haven't we, Cole? We uh, we've unveiled your your true plan. So we 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 hope you enjoyed that. Um, but yeah. So um, you know, do you think uh, you were slapping? Do you, do you think you will slap around Brian Pillman Jr. anytime soon? Because uh, we had Ace Austin on the show back in uh, back back in June, and he and and he would love to slap around. Brian Pillman Jr. again. I'm sure you would as well. You know, just teach him a lesson from from hitting uh, Area Blake. I mean, none of you have actually uh, said anything about that. Why? I mean, well, the thing is, I've already wrestled Brian Pillman Jr. twice, and I've already beat Brian Pillman Jr. twice. Nightmare Pendulum in the middle of the ring. So, you know, actually, it's funny. You, re- you mentioned Ace Austin. I think I'd probably ra- rather wrestle Ace Austin at this point, just, you know, to do something new and fresh. Yeah, yeah, I think it'd be a good match, but I think you know, is you gotta be aware of his uh, magic trick. You know, he, he, he's a good magician. Oh yeah, he's got he's got those tricks. I'm I'm not, I'm not too fond of those. You know, I think if he tried to pull any of that crap on me, I'd shove that ace of spades where the sun don't shine. <laughs> oh, I, I, I would love to see that happen uh, soon. Please book that MLW. <laughs> That'd be a great match to see <laughs> uh, for 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 the Open Weight Championship. That that would be a a. A match you you did not want to miss, you know, kind of thing. Um, yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you have to agree, don't you? You know, uh, you'd be defending your championship more than uh, than any other champion in MLW, and uh, you know, the more defenses, the more better your reputation will be. If fans hate you or just all like you. Oh yeah. Um. So who 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 would you um suggest and uh, would be a great guest here on the uh, final show from MLW? Who do you think I should get in contact with to be uh, on the show after you from MOW. <laughs> oh man. Um well I mean you said you had Aria, you had me, you hate Max, so I think the next logical choice would have to be Richard Holiday, right? Yeah, good choice, good choice indeed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We uh, I've got some I've got I I've, I've got some disagreements with him as well. Uh to do with, <laughs> with, with a company uh in Pennsylvania. You've been there, you've spoken to the guy we we've had on Tom Mitchell on the show a few uh, months ago. You know him as the PPW backstage reporter. Okay. Uh, you may not remember him, but anyway, you you and him did not like him because he interrupted your workout backstage. Oh, uh, that's right. That's right. I remember now. Uh, I remember. Yes, yes. And uh, I, was, I, was quite, I was quite offended by that, you know. He was just trying to do his job and just get some, you know, gossip from you guys. Well, tell us. We're, we'll do it better. That's all. Mm. It's simple. Yeah, yeah, it's simple, but I mean, you'll be nicer to him next time, though. Yeah, I mean, I'm not paid to be nice. I'm paid to be uh, paid to win matches, brother. <laughs> okay, well, I, 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 I'll, I'll let him know his uh, your your feedback to him, and I uh, let's speak to him. <laughs> <laughs> Cause I'm, I'm I'm good friends with him, you know, and uh, you know, and um, yeah, you've got, you got to be nice to the, these reporters. You've, you've been nice to me, you know, uh, so I <laughs> got you on your happy day. So. So um so means what what <laughs> yeah what, you, what you, you, you caught me you caught me at a good time yeah I have haven't I I I've said that I have um what is uh, so so what are you packing then to go to uh, Japan with then you're gonna you're gonna take your your sun lotion you're gonna take uh, some shorts with you you're gonna take some winter 
clothes yeah. I mean, I'm going to I'm going to take a lot of merchandise cuz I'm sure they're going to want to buy it. Oh yes. I'm going to take uh I'm going to take some pre-workout so that way I can hit the gym when I need to. Nice. And I'm gonna take the NLW National Championship so I can show it off. I hopefully I get to defend it and uh I do not plan on losing it while I'm over there. That would be pretty awful. Yeah, it would be awful. I mean, yeah. if, I lost, if I lost that while I'm over there, I don't think I'll come home. I just think I'll start a new life. <laughs> just abandon everything. Oh, no. But, uh, no. yeah, I actually, I need. A, I haven't even packed, <laughs> believe it or not, so that's something I still have to do. Oh, right. So pretty pretty much once we're wrapped here, I got a, I got a lot of packing to do. Yeah, yeah. I may, I may, I may go to a shop and get some uh, Japanese translator book. I mean, do you know what to say in Japanese when you get to the airport uh, in Japan? I know, right? Hopefully, <laughs> I mean, hopefully they have somebody there who could just translate everything for me. Fingers crossed. Well, Make well, it nice and easy. Well, there is a British dude who works there, so maybe he can help you. No, that's true. Yeah, it is true. It is. It's damn true. Anyway, um, it's been a pleasure having you on the show, uh, Hamill Stone. Um, is there anything else you'd like to mention, which I may not have said, which you think is very important to get off your chest here on the uh, Father Show, the best wrestling podcast in the UK? You must have agreed to that as well, mustn't you? Man, um, I don't think I have anything uh, specific I want to want to say. You know, maybe I'll just be a pretentious and tell everybody to follow me on social media and all that crap. Yeah, yeah. You well, know, what so is your media? That's the most important thing. Yeah, it's, uh, I'm at Alex Hammerstone on Instagram and Twitter. I'm Alexander Hammerstone on Facebook. And yeah, we, um, if any, uh, everybody I'm going to be, like I, like I said, I'm leaving for Japan tomorrow. So hopefully I'm able to document that pretty well over the next couple of weeks. And hopefully I get some uh, interesting, uh, interesting uh, material out of it. So stay tuned. Yeah, stay tuned indeed, and, and that's the first time we've had a wrestler yawn here on the uh, Fowler Show. So <laughs> you're making a lot of history today, man. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I've bored him for about 46 minutes, and, and, and it took 46 minutes for him to yawn. This is fantastic um, here on the uh, Fowler Show. Uh, but we must say as well that you do have a YouTube channel as well. Uh, Alexander Hammerstone on YouTube, I believe it is, isn't it? Oh, I do. Yeah, yeah. I'm so thing. I I used to be a lot more active on YouTube. I used to do a lot of stuff, uh, kind of like a fitness stuff. But yeah, now now I'll still I'll still upload some some videos, some matches, some highlights every once in a while. So that's some something to look at too. Yeah. So make sure you go there, subscribe to him, show him to your wrestling friends, and show him about. You know, he's uh, he's a great fitness guy. He can give you a lot of tips and uh, knows all the best tan places if, if if you want a good tan. That was my conversation with Alexander. Hammerstone, I hope you all enjoyed listening to that flashback episode, who is of course now in total non-stop action, uh, doing some incredible stuff down there and you know, he's taking it to a next level in TNA and we wish him all the best and maybe one day we'll have him back on the show soon, uh, but now uh, on to some of the better news, uh, we do have two more episodes coming to you this coming week, one on Tuesday and we've got one on Sunday of next week as well so I hope you can tune in for both of them but for right now until the next episode drops enjoy the rest of your morning night evening or afternoon you've been listening to the Edward Fowler show subscribe and leave a rating on Apple podcasts or follow on Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts to get new and flashback episodes every week more on Facebook and Instagram at Edward Fowler Show and edwardfowlershow.com.